My name is Pedro. Um, I have been working for Gameloft in Blue Mobile, but now, now is it working? <laughs> but now I'm working in Black River Studio, which is uh, Cydia, Cydia Studio, and Cydia, Cydia is a Samsung Institute. So Black River is a game company created by Samsung. And okay, there is, uh, let's skip it. Um, uh, just, just very, very quickly. Um, it's, very, it's very dark, but it's some pics from the games we, we did. Most of them were made for Samsung VR. This one is Angest. You, you are lost with a robot in a spaceship, something like that. And this one is Dead Bar Falls. I did that box, by the way, you can see. <laughs> Okay, just very quickly to you guys see uh, the games we made. This one is a shooter in VR as well. Rococo is an investigative game. You are dead, but your spirit wants to know who killed you. It's very interesting. Um, Jake and Tez, it's a game about photograph monsters. It's for kids. Maybe our most beautiful game, I don't know, because of the colors. So hard surface techniques um, for fast concept and prototype. Why we are discussing this? Because uh, there in, same in, in Black River Studio, sometimes to convince a game designer or a art director, we have to build a fast hard surface. Uh, let's forget for let's forget that box cutter and hard ops is real, okay? Because it's very hard to convince a big company like Samsung to work with other softwares. I'm there. I'm there more than two years, and it was very hard to convince them to work with Blender. But I want this better, and now we are using it. So we are dis discussing it because hard surface is in many scenarios, fantasy, sci-fi, cartoon, realist, wherever you are doing, you have some hard surface to, to build. And I'm still, uh, especially there, I uh, see lots of artists are still struggling to do hard surface fast. And as I said, as I want to say before, a happy prototype is a daily necessity because uh, game design don't know how 3D works and had they, they had it, the idea, but they know how to do, so we have to do fast. Sometimes we have less than one day to build something, to they uh, start uh, testing Unity or Unreal Engine. And because hand Blender has the tools for, for that, and then I have selected four techniques that I use a lot there. Uh, you may think that are, they are, how you say, um, they are basic, but uh, they are very useful. The first one I think is the, is the, the most common technique is Boolean plus a topo, which means, let's say, I want to build uh, uh, this, this torso from K2SO, which you were done in, entirely in Blender to convince my boss, by the way. So the technique I used for this part was to build a basic modeling. Oh, I, ha I have a mouse here. So I did this basic modeling, and I created these, these, these deals for difference, for subtract. Then I have the, the, the form, the shape I wanted. And before that, you do the head topology which, if I can say, it's a pain in the ass. You have to have a lot of patience to do that. Uh, in case you guys don't know what head topology means, I did this, this, this quick, quick uh, GIF just to show the process. The process of head topology, who doesn't know, is to do rebuild, redesign the, the, the topology of the mesh. But the, the, the good thing here is that in, in this technique, you already have the form, which is the worst part to do. So using this technique, you achieve the form, then you redesign the, the topology after. 
It's a good technique. I like, I like it a lot. It's not the best for, for fast in prototype, but the result is, is very nice. A lot of, of parts of this robot were made using this technique. I don't know why the, the JPEG is so, so bad here. Okay, just a, a cycles render. I did this render to show my boss because he's a, I don't know if I'm saying correct, but he's a Maya alienist. He likes Maya, <coughs> Maya a lot. So it's a, a WIP project I'm doing for, a, an, a, a, for other, another presentation. I'm a huge fan of Daft Punk. Then the helmets were made using this, this technique, booleans and, and retopology. So uh, let's talk about pros and cons, because it's, it's important. Boolean 2 is a fast way to achieve a complex form, which is the best part of it. And Boolean modifier, oh, I think it's not correct, the, the word there. But Boolean modifier allows to control every operation step, keeping it alive, which means, let's go back here quickly. Oh, it's, it's a little bit slow, let's, let's wait. Oh, I think. I want to show you an uh, uh, image, but the computer, okay, no, okay. Which means this, um, this green, green geo, this green geometry, this yellow geometry, the blue geometry that make that, that the form happens can be in separated modifiers, which lets you to, give, to have a lot of controls of what to happen. Because you can change the geometry, you can change the position of the geometry, then you can uh, update this form, and then you can apply and do the head topology. Um, the cons of this te technique is that Boolean results in bad mesh, so uh, avoid uh, we should avoid low mesh to get a better result. And the cons, yes, of course, is because you need to head topology, the head topology, oh, what, the topology step, which is a pain for many artists because of very technician. Okay, that the, the second technique I, I I use it a lot as well, because it looks like the first one, but it's different because you can skip the second the second um, the second step that was um, head topology. Head topology. You can skip directly for bevel node, which means the the, the process is, is is like the same, but you do the basic modeling, you you create the geos imagining the result you want, but in the end you don't need to do head topology. Some artists think they can use a bevel modifier to do the their jobs, but they don't but it won't work because the topology is so, is so messed up. Oh, the topology you can see here is so messed up that bevel can't work. So I found this way, use bevel node. You can see here the, 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 the messy topology, but in the hand there you have a good result. And the secret is to use, uh, okay, uh, can, you can, maybe you can't see, but is a, you can use a bevel node in the no, um, uh, plug-in in normal. This is a principal shader here. And I have a, a gift for you, okay. Here you can see the, 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 crap, the crap mesh. I don't know if I can say that word, but <laughs> the mess, mess mesh. But here you have the node, and you just plug into normal. Always use the, uh, 16. 16 uh, samples, I mean. Then you can see uh, the result is instantly. It's a great result. Even if, if, if you can see that part, I'll go back one slide to show you. Um, if the computer will allow me. Uh, 
wait, wait a minute. Okay, it's here. You can see here is two pieces. Is this is one piece, this is another piece. They are not welded. They just two pieces combined. But they better know to do the job. You can see he does the weld very well. If you work with uh, uh, with a mesh with a resolution enough, you have the you have a good result. Let's uh, see it again. You may think it's not necessary, but when you work with game design, I'm, I, I don't know if is, there is a game designer here, but in Brazil, many of game designers, they don't know how 3D, uh, 3D apps works. They don't understand. They need to see exactly what you are doing, exactly what you are saying. So prototype is almost very close to the, f to the, to the final mesh. You know what I mean? OK, this is, is a better example. I'm uh, energy drink addicted, okay? So I did this refrigerator. It's a refrigerator concept for Red Bull. Then what, what you are seeing here is, is a, just a mesh with a lot of Boolean operation, a lot of cuts here, no bevel, no finish here. Then the result is just bevel. I made a close up for you because you can see the bevel result is, is, is amazing. I just plug it into the normal and mix it with uh, roughness maps and shaders. But that, the, the, the mesh is only this. There is no bevel finish here in modeling. This result is just in render using the bevel node. We use it a lot there. Again, I will say you may think this. Oh, let's go back in. You may think this is basic, but when you have to present an idea and there is a lot of studios doing the same, and you want to do the best presentation, and you don't want to present. Let's go back. Just uh, you don't want to present uh, something like this and say, "Hey, I was thinking something like that." No, you want to present. So it's very close to the to the finish, very close to the, the real the real idea you want to present. Okay, uh, let's talk quickly about the pros. Fast and nice result for concept, concept and prototype. Great for render results. You can jump direct to Blender node. Also, oh, I, I was saying Portuguese, ou seja. <laughs> Without wasting time in your topo, you can mix multiple nodes to have many bevel levels, which means you can have a different thickness of bevel, just mixing the bevel nodes. You can apply, uh, you can apply um, many bevel nodes, just mixing them in different parts of your mesh. If what I mean is, do I have a mouse here? Uh, sometimes I have. Which means I can bevel one, type of bevel here, and another, another one for the gray area. It's up to you. I really love this technique. OK, the cons is, is that work on, only hander because now everybody wants to use Eevee. I, like, I love Eevee, but I, I think I'm more Cycles guy because the GI and the, the shadow results. Uh, okay, uh, great results only with high quality booleans. The same as before, avoid low has mesh, less primitives to do the boolean operations. Okay, the third one is, is, is interesting to me because I'm, I'm, I like a lot of me mechanical modeling. And I used to use a software called uh, Sparks Mechanical but they, they became very, how we say, expensive. And I had to create some, some, some technique to use the, to build mechanical modeling brand. I put these two images because not everybody knows what mechanical modeling means. 
So it's this. Okay, you can, may think it's ugly, but we like to do that. So, what the fuck? Oh, wait. Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. Uh, in case you guys don't know what uh, screen wrap is, because this technique is about a screen wrap modifier, I did this image just to show that uh, screen wrap, what screen wrap does is he takes a mesh and wrap in a, another mesh. So I have three, three examples here. Sorry. And I have a sphere, a, a, a cylinder, and a cube just to see that the, the mesh conforms to that shape. So how we use that? Use it. Okay, I have a uh, ugly, but uh, sometimes my my mouse works, sometimes it doesn't. But I have this ugly, but come a little complex shape. When you when you, when you see it, you f you may think it's a single mesh, but it's not. But the handle you see. You can see, you can see here looks like welded piece, but it's a different mesh. I will show you another image. Just show quickly uh, how it works, but before that, I will show that. Okay, you can see it's very is a di different mesh with different topologies. Okay, you can see a z fight problem. Do you guys know what z fight is? Okay, the fight, he, you can see the, the, the guys are fighting here, but in the handler, you see the result. And it's the same in Eve, if you, if you want to use the tec this technique. Just be patient a little. Um. They told me the computer was a little bit slow, but okay. Uh, it's a GIF. It showed. Uh, let's just wait one second. Let's try again. There is no tequila for this moment. Okay. And I took three. Okay, let's try again. Okay. It's just showing the, the, uh, the process I use. I have a piece and I want to conform it. Let's say I want a tube uh, coming out for this curved form. Curved form here. So I use uh, a skin wrap and I change to project here. And I fix it just to one X to avoid deformations. Then you can see, you can see. When I'm happy, I just apply it. Okay. Let's put some bevel here. I could use a bevel modifier, but... Uh, I want to put some smooth groups here. You can see the fighter happening here. Then I'm going to clone the, the same material. And I'll test the handler. Sometimes in viewport, you see some lines because I, I don't know if, 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 uh, if uh, viewport is accurated, but, but in the end, in the end, the result is perfect. Why I'm show, show why I'm showing you guys this because when you start doing hard surface, I did this. I, I can talk for me. You can do everything in the single mesh. So starting to struggling with edge loops, mesh resolution, a, a lot of of this 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 shit. And but here you can see is a lot of different mesh with different topologies, different resolution. 
where you you take a look at the viewport preview, say, Jesus Christ, it's not happening, it's not working. But if you try if or okay, if or cycle, which I prefer to present to present an idea, I prefer cycles because GI, shadow, resolution, that kind of stuff, you see the, the effect is perfect. And to validate that, that technique, I used the CAD model, I did the same thing, and I studied that the, the way the CAD model does the, 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 the how you say, the, the well, it's like that. He's projected the, the form, then he starts to Extrude. So let's see a co cool stuff because this is, I know this is boring. Okay, this is just to show if if you think um, texture will be a problem because we have a lot of of meshes here. After struggling a little, I discovered this this technique that you can use ob in texture coordinate. You can select just one object, then you can use the procedural texturing to do whatever you want. Uh, we all know how powerful uh, procedural texturing is. I will show you a good example of that. So, cool stuff here. I emailed this guy, Rolf Bart, from Ubisoft, but he didn't answer me at the time. So, to validate the technique, I decided to do this robot. I liked it a lot when I, when I saw it on ArtStation. Then decided to build it using these this techni techniques. Okay, nothing unusual here. So, <laughs> I think it's gonna cry right now. I mean the computer. I did a, a EV render showing the turning table using um, a procedural texturing. Let's wait a little. I wait for a, a few more seconds, but I have some images if the GIF doesn't work. I, I, I think I must skip this to show, okay. Thank you, God. So this is a EV render very quickly to show the uh, procedural texturing. Maybe it's fast, you can see the dirt in the, the other stuff, but I'll show uh, close up images. Let's see the images, okay. It's a cycle render using a HD HDR map. I took two weeks to do that robot. You can see in that part the, the okay. The uh, let's okay. You can see that part I use it a lot. The projection, the projection technique, especially in curved surface like uh, like this one. When this you have two curved surface different, and I have a piece coming out here. Even for how you say depression holes. Um, you can use the technique, you can use the, the you can build the, the CAT, the, the, the cat word, then you wrap, you do the boolean, then after that you can use the bevel node, you can use the bevel manually. But you can see the result works just fine. I use it both uh, procedural and procedural texturing and normal texturing for roughness. Okay, 
See, here you can see the, the, the mesh is, is a crap. It's, it's, you see a lot of uh, a lot of different mesh topologies. I use it to I use to triangu triang triangulate sorry the mesh because you use unit and unit works best with triangles more than normal polygons. Okay, the pros the pros and cons here it works both eve and cycles. No topology work which is a best. Great for mechanical modeling. The cone is bad for animation if you want to animate mesh deformation because the topology is, is a mess. And as the other ones, need high quality mesh for best projection results. Okay, the last one is we call, you call their panels. I don't know how you, call, you guys call this. But which, wh what is panels? Wh where is my mouse? Okay. Okay, panel is that crazy, crazy thing that happen that make you think there are two, two pieces assembled, but you can do that in one piece. You see it a lot in sci-fi stuff. Let's see how it works. I'll be quickly. Let's wait the computer to process the GIF. This one is very useful. You guys want to make me some question? That's the time because the computer is thinking. I, I, I don't delete it. Because this is, this is rapid, so I don't delete it because in the render won't appear. And they need the mesh, they, they need the mesh completely. I tried this before to delete, but they create a, a, a line, a strange line. I don't know if it's an ambient occlusion line, but if you leave, leave the mesh, you won't have problem. Let's try again. Yes. I learned this technique. Uh, I, 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 I did a course in CGA, CGMA from a guy from Electronic Arts that made a lot of Star Wars weapons, but he taught me that in 3ds Max. Then I find a way to work in Blender. <laughs> you can see instantly we see a crazy result. I will explain how it works, but you can see you have a solidify and a bevel modifier here already in the mesh. I'm going to do a, a, a circle, circle shape. I always like to test in cycles. I know you are in a, how you say, a EV era, but I'm a cycle guy. You can see that the result is amazing. The secret here is when you create the edge loop, I have to mention that because I almost forgot. You have to split this edge loop. When you split the edge loop, you create one vertex over another. Then the solidifying bevel starts to work. 
you can see I can cr I create the edge and then I split. Just press V, enter. As I said before, I'm always testing cycles because sometimes uh, the issues only appears in handler. Let's see a more irregular form. So, as I mentioned, solidify. Sometimes thickness in, in, in a negative value, but always uh, in a little, in a little value. And bevel all, always in angle, always in angle. No need to create hard sharp edges or that kind of stuff. And for me, it's enough to convince the guys that you need the panels more. So another example where I could use it. In the K2SO, so when you are modeling, you can think in the topology and think, okay, I will need a panel here, so I'll leave an edge loop exactly here, so you won't be a problem. And you have controls because if you use the modifier, you can control everything. So some handers, see th the result. I'm quite a crazy render guy, you guys can see. It's a real-time render. So the pros and cons. Um, pros works for both event cycles and great for fast, fast result because you just, you just um, but the modifiers, you just start creating and splitting the edges you, you want. The cons, I couldn't find one, which is nice. Then is it, uh, I showed you guys four hard surface techniques, which came, came, came uh, you can think, oh, it's so basic, but I use it every day, every day to make the guys, uh, to validate pro, uh, uh, how we say is assets for games. Is what you, I, I do. Uh, I do a lot to nowadays. And thank you very much. If you guys have, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>